Good morning, uh, this fr dear friends from Cordoba. Uh, it's a great honor to be back with you in this uh, edition of Friends of Friends. You don't know how much I miss uh, to be back with you and, and do our, our ritual uh, to go to Betos for a, a good vacío and some papas a lo pobre and some good wine. Well, let, let us begin. And is, I just want to tell you that I'm very happy to be, uh, at least in this form, uh, with you guys. So what I want to talk about is the observational constraints on the dynamics of compact groups and galaxy pairs. Uh, I am Omar Lopez Cruz from the Instituto Nacional de Astrofisica, Optica y Electronica. And uh, below you will find my collaborators from around the world, many of them from the National University, um, Bristol, uh, North Dakota, Armagh Observatory, and Inoue. Compact groups are defined morphologically by a criterion uh, that determines its, comp its compactness by selecting a small aperture uh, to enclose at least four galaxies. And within that aperture, the, the surface brightness should be less than 26 magnitude. Um, so this is a working definition. And uh, there are like the population distribution of in groups uh, in compact groups is distributed like 31 percent are ellipticals 41 percent are spirals 43 percent of uh, compact groups display breaches tails and other tidal distortions and 75 percent of groups uh, show uh, have x-rays so they have an intragroup uh, medium and 45 uh, percent of uh, of, of the compact groups host low luminosity AGN. There has been this uh, problem regarding the, dy the dynamical time in groups, in compact groups. Uh, this, a simple calculation says that the dynamical time is a hundredth of a Hubble time. And people calculated for these uh, compact groups, that is the densest galaxy concentration, known as the Cipher Sextet or the Higgson Compact Group uh, Compact Group 79. Um, uh, people said that you should have seen at least 300 crossings within a Hubble time. Um, so people infer from this observation that compact uh, groups should have already uh, have collapsed to uh, an elliptical galaxy remnant and because we see still the galaxies there, so that they're, well, we call it uh, this paradox with the short dynamical time. And there are many solutions have been proposed. The most popular is one that says that these are not really groups held by gravity. These, these are just chance projections. And the other option is that these groups are just this is the first time that the galaxies are coming together. And the third option is that galaxies have survived many orbital times. In 1985, uh, Berchinger proposed a numerical improvement over the, this model of the um, a spherical collapse and invoked a secondary um, uh, info. It was self-similar within as uh, Einstein the Sitter universe, but the, the calculations uh, said that there would be discontinuities in the density, and also the, uh, you could see that uh, you could observe uh, a one collapse and a second crossing. So um, this was uh, an improvement of our models of, of just the structure formation, the simplest one. Uh, but uh, there was no connection with observations until uh, 2015 when Brentali said that you could observe the first and, and uh, the second turnaround radius by discontinuities in the density of, uh, of a galaxy distribution. And you could see here that the, the first turnaround radius and the second uh, turnaround radius for the Virgo cluster. And this is uh, Brentali 
and now is an emeritus professor at the University, at the University of Hawaii. And this was the last meeting that I attended in South Africa in February last year. Um, so he used uh, data from uh, um, two mass and uh, more than 15 galaxies with velocities and began to study the distribution and the dynamics of galaxies in order to infer the second uh, uh, crossing uh, radius. So one of the things that he came about, and this is, well, he wasn't the first one to suggest, is that uh, the local group is not actually, a, we cannot call it a, a, a group, but an association because each galaxy, M31 and, and the Milky Way are considered groups. And there are 16 groups in this whole association that we all call the, the local group. But uh, each of these over density behave as a group. So the, the, the definition of group is extended and, and, uh, for these studies. Um, so then uh, you, he uh, totally went on and measure uh, for many uh, over densities. Uh, the second turnaround radius, measure also the velocity dispersion as the um, standard deviation of the velocities. Um, if the velocities are distributed like a Gaussian, then this uh, uh, velocity dispersion should be the same as uh, in the case of a Gaussian. So uh, he found a very nice correlation that you could determine from the dynamics, the uh, the magnitude of a second turnaround radius. Also, from other studies, uh, you could uh, relate the second turnaround radius with the uh, with R two hundred. And also, there uh, is a theoretical derivation uh, of the first turnaround radius from the second turnaround radius. So it it, it says that. Um, the second turnaround radius should be um, smaller by a factor of 3.14. And there is, uh, there is some uh, error in that correlation. But uh, what you can see from here, if you measure the velocity dispersion, you can get an estimate of the second turnaround radius. And uh, if you go to the theory, there should be other scaling laws, uh, one with the mass of the system, uh, this one the, of the second turnaround radius in terms of the velocity dispersion, and also the mass of the system. In that, that, that is also, this is a derivation from um, uh, the video theory. You can get from the velocity dispersion, you can get the mass of the system. So um, this, in fair correlations, they are, the three of them are related, were observed, and, and um, so you, you have here the, uh, the dependence of the second turnaround radius with the mass uh, that goes to the, uh, the uh, is, is up to the one third, or the cube, or the mass of, uh, with the cube of the velocity dispersion, and this is uh, the one that uh, we already saw. So if you measure any of these parameters, you can tell the mass and you can tell uh, 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 the second turnaround radius. So you can infer things regarding the, the geometry and also uh, uh, the dynamics. So, but uh, groups are complex in the sense that you could see that uh, the gas is not always, this is H1, the cold gas is not always with the galaxies, this is showing uh, uh, that there has been some interactions, and uh, there is another one where the, the, all the gas is 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 just in an envelope, and then uh, when you see uh, uh, you you are more evolved, uh, the gas is 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 gone, and and um, so the people have measured the cold gas, the H1, and there is always a deficit. Um, so why are we talking about groups? Well, groups are really not really important because they are 
the bridge between um, what we have here is the mass and here we have the luminosity. Here are cluster galaxies and, and, and we have also um, globulars and dwarf galaxies. But uh, the, what I want to call your attention is that groups are the bridge between ellipticals and clusters as a whole. So this, this is why they are very important, but they, they, they're, they're not very tight. So what, what means is that dynamically these structures are still evolving. So where do we find the uh, 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 Cipher uh, sexted, uh, you can find it within uh, Sloan, and you can see that it's more or less isolated. Um, this is very nearby. You can see it here, and this is uh, was reported already by uh, uh, Diaz Saldivares Merchan Muriel in 2005. Um, so, uh, to gain more knowledge on groups, uh, there is this new capability in, in most of the large observatories already to observe uh, with uh, bundles of fibers in, in, in a, uh, uh, to do very detailed observations of galaxies using um, 300 or over 300 uh, fibers. And uh, you can get about 2,000 spectra per object. And with this, uh, you can analyze what you have to divide. You have the red with low resolution, and this, uh, this one is Khalifa, and the blue with the high resolution. We, we are going to consider uh, the red part. So um, this data is really beautiful. Um, the fibers on the sky, they cover 2.7 arc seconds. Um, and uh, the, uh, you can accommodate a full galaxy and, and do all sort of analysis. And then the, oh, there are a lot of papers already published with this beautiful set that is called the Khalifa. So this is the observation of Khalifa for the um, Cipher Sextet. A is the brightest galaxy. This is only half of a galaxy observed. This is a footprint. Uh, galaxy B is really the one that they were after, uh, and there is Galaxy C and part of Galaxy F. Galaxy E is not a part of, it's, it's a background galaxy. Galaxy D is outside, um, but this one is related to, to the, to the uh, group. Uh, and you can see the spe spectra, uh, the integrated spectra for each of these galaxies, uh, the, the, the ones A, A uh, B, C, and F. And uh, you can tell that they have brought um, Balmer lines. And in some cases, you can see H alpha in emission. So this is the map uh, for um, the luminosity of each galaxy. And we will be talking about these ellipses, what we call the inner part, is, is, is a fraction of, of a, um, effective radius. So from zero to 0.5, we call it the inner part. And then uh, we call the, the, we have the intermediate one, and then we have the outer one. Okay, I'll, come, I'll come back to this. So the outer part is uh, the, up to 1.5 times the effective radius. And you, you can see here H alpha, uh, in emission very clearly for Galaxy B and Galaxy A. And this is uh, Fabri Pero observations from Hawaii and, and Mexico too. Uh, and you can tell that they, they are very, very similar. But from the study of the surface brightness of the galaxy, the, the one that I show you, the image that I show you is, is an HST image. You can see that these galaxies are, are really small. From uh, the definitions given uh, above, uh, we can calculate the velocity dispersion, as I said, is, is the standard deviation of the velocities uh, of the redshift of each galaxy. We, we calculated that for five members, um, that is 160, uh, the error is large, it's only five members. 
but we can calculate the first turnaround radius, which is uh, uh, 1600 uh, kiloparsecs, and the second turnaround radius is 530 uh, kiloparsecs. Uh, H1, H0 is, uh, is um, parameterized in terms of 75. Uh, and then uh, you can also uh, make a very, very uh, simple model and you can calculate the time. And as we have seen before, is, uh, uh, is the square root of the turnaround uh, uh, cube uh, divided by the mass. And then you have this factor of 1.1. So um, the, very, the first turnaround radius happened at 11 giga, giga years ago. And the second turnaround radius is, is happening is two giga years. But uh, we say that is 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 happening that because the Hubble time is is 12.6 when uh, H0 is 75 uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec. So um, is there a way to test that uh, to support this idea that the galaxies have already collapsed? And, uh, and that the times that we are calculated with this simple model are correct. Well, the, there is one way, and is uh, is uh, by reconstructing the uh, history of a star formation from each galaxy uh, and doing a synthesis analysis. This technique has uh, been evolving, and uh, very interesting results, consistent results, have been. Uh, obtained, and uh, you have to combine uh, models uh, and many considerations regarding uh, how the star formation uh, proceeded, how um, uh, the, uh, what do you do with the dust, and then how what do you do with the, um, the evolution of, of the stars. But in principle, you can arrive to a solution that can be consistent, and and this is. Uh, um, the way you do the synthesis, you, you, you're doing a reconstruction by summing um, simple uh, stellar populations. So this is the most important result. You can reconstruct the cosmic history of star formation, going uh, galaxy by galaxy at different redshifts and measuring uh, the star formation um, in, in, each, in each galaxy. And you see that around of, of redshift between two and three, there is a, a peak on the star formation. But this also, without going into observing galaxies of different redshifts, you can get all the galaxies at redshift zero and do a reconstruction by the fossil record uh, that we call the archaeological. And you can also find uh, the, the cosmic noon. Uh, and they are, the results are very similar. So then, uh, this is, is, is giving us a hope that we can uh, apply this technique and arrive at uh, solutions that are consistent. And I would, I would not argue that they are unique, but uh, they are consistent with all the inputs that, that you use for your model. So uh, the other thing is that uh, you can analyze this history of a star formation. You can go and, and because you have information over the whole galaxy, uh, you can consider the inner part that goes up to 0.5, the, um, the effective radius, or uh, the inner part, the intermediate part that goes from 0.5 to 1 in, um, in uh, effective radius, and the, the outer part that would go from 1 uh, effective radius to 1.5. And then you can follow the evolution within these uh, uh, ellipses, with the rings, right? So we can we will apply this. This uh, Ibarra Medel uh, developed this technique, and uh, so this is there again the, the uh, galaxies in the um, Cipher sextet, um, and this is a reconstruction. The blue one is the inner part, uh, the green one is the intermediate. And the red one is the outer part. And here, what I have, uh, uh, these uh, rectangles two and three are uh, selected 
because they enclose a star formation that is common to the four galaxies that we can analyze in, in this point. So we can infer from here that the first crossing happened at point three, at redshift of point three. The second turnaround happened at point 17. And the second crossing is happening now, uh, and it just began at point uh, 016. And, and this is uh, very close to the uh, redshift of a group. So um, uh, we compare with a control sample and see that if these uh, boxes are unique to the galaxies in this group, or they are shared by all by any galaxies that we can pick up random. So we have uh, a sample of, uh, of galaxies that are more or less isolated, and you can see that they, each of them have their unique uh, history of a star formation. Uh, so we uh, take the average of 33 galaxies, and we see that this second burst is, is um, a little bit uh, accelerated in, in, in the group, and then we, you don't see a second um, a, 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 a third burst of star formation in any uh, galaxies in the field. So um, these kind of analysis have been done before using photometry. And uh, Nishura said that this for this component F said that it was a, a, a tidal tail of galaxy B. But uh, with broad colors, you cannot get a fine reconstruction. And uh, because we see that Galaxy F and Galaxy V have different histories of uh, star formation in the detail, so we say that F is, uh, is a galaxy rather than just a tidal thing. And uh, we can calculate the mass uh, of this system of a group and this, uh, the dynamical time using. Um, uh, caustic analysis is 5.5, 5, 10 to the 12, or the virial uh, theorem is 8.2, 10 to the 12 uh, solar masses. And with this, uh, we, we can calculate, we, we, we can tell that, uh, uh, reconstruct the whole dynamics of these things. And then by analyzing the surface brightness of component F, we can say that it was perhaps a spiral galaxy. And um, so we have almost everything that we need to know around, about um, the evolution of the ga these uh, galaxies in, in this group. And then um, so we can say that they are coming for the second crossing uh, and, and, and it's about to happen. That's why they are so compact. So it, are there any other way to prove that this is actually that our story is is right? So uh, the, we 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 the, the same observations provided us with independent tests, and one of the things that we found is Galaxy B exhibits a counter-rotating uh, disk. You see the stars going in one direction, and you see the gas uh, going in the opposite direction. Here you have the rotation curves for each. We can calculate with these dynamics, the, uh, with these velocities, we can calculate the dynamic, the dynamical mass of these galaxies, two times 10 to the 10 solar masses. But uh, the, how stable are, are these structures? And this is, these small modes of counter-rotating this cannot be a self-generated excitation of a disk. You need to have interactions in order to form them. And, and there was a very nice uh, work uh, by Steckenberg in 2019 that showed that counter-rotating disks are stable for over two giga year periods. So having been so, uh, so stable, we said that you know, this uh, counter-rotating disk formed during the first uh, crossing when the galaxies had more gas. So uh, the other thing is that if these things are so, um, uh, it, 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 regarding the third episode of, of star formation that is happening right now, so you, what you expect is that the Balmer lines should have equivalent widths 
that should be nearly the same in each galaxy. We measure them, and within the errors for galaxy A, galaxy B, galaxy C, and galaxy F, they are the same. And, and this is confirming that they are sharing a evil episode of, of, of star formation, and uh, Balmer lines are more important uh, in A stars, and so the, the lifetime is uh, between 0.1 to 1 giga year. So this is just happening in front of our eyes. So this is uh, with all of this formalism that we have um, studied, we can tell the dynamics and we can say that uh, compact groups are crossing uh, for the second time. And, uh, and the, uh, the distortion that, uh, that has caused this uh, first collapse and then going to, 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 uh, to a second collapse is that the cold gas here in red is outside the galaxies and the hot gas is, is around the galaxy. This, this is, this is a, a, a closer that is behind uh, uh, the, the group. It's a much uh, larger redshift, but the, the, the gas is um, are related to, the, to each individual galaxy. But there is a lot of intra-group intra light, and it was measured by Rocha and Mendes de Oliveira, and it says, uh, well, it is, I, I think you have, to, you have to make consideration that you're considered light from a background cluster, but it's about 45, 46% of the light of a whole system is in, in the form of uh, intra, intra group light. So let's just change in this uh, last minutes to talk about galaxy pairs. And now we just only consider close. Uh, pairs um, that are uh, uh, have been observed with the Sloan and, and another uh, survey that is called Gamma. And the difference between a Sloan and, and Gamma is the density of the sampling. Um, so only in, in because of the fibers, you could only have uh, the, the pairs that are more separated are the ones that were sampled. Uh, with mo most most efficiently in the Sloan, but in 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 uh, in gamma uh, the sampling was much better. So uh, we distinguish major and minor groups. Major uh, major uh, pairs are uh, the ratio of the masses of uh, galaxies is between 0.5 and 2. And if the the, the if it's larger, then it's called a minor pair. So this is work by Garduño et al. and uh, for Gamma. And uh, here the velocity dispersion for a pair is given by the difference and divided. This is a standard deviation for two, <laughs> for a sample of two. <laughs> and, and this is the difference between the velocities uh, divided by the square root of two. The, of course, we, we have to consider the absolute value. And, and this, uh, the, this difference is called uh, the velocity distance in, in other um, uh, studies. So we call it velocity dispersion for only two. But uh, the range that we have sampled is between 50 kilometers per second to 700. And um, so that means that we have a second turnaround radius between 145 kiloparsecs and two megaparsecs, which means that all the pairs considered in this sample are within the second uh, turnaround uh, radius. And also, if uh, velocity dispersion is larger than 300 kilometers per second, what we have is, is a pair within a large uh, um, association that could be a group or a cluster. So this uh, view that we have is, is, is it was also published by Patton in 2013 uh, doing numerical simulations. And then you see this uh, uh, behavior that we have observed for the first uh, collapse and then, then the, sec uh, the turnaround and it's coming to a second collapse. Here, what you have is a different uh, parameter, uh, impact parameters. So we recover a former uh, result that is uh, close pairs have enhanced star formation. And um, here is the metallicity, 
and and the metallicity doesn't show um, a clear pattern. But uh, for major and minor pairs, uh, the uh, proximity enhanced the star formation. What was surprising was to find that when we uh, parameterize the velocity separation by this uh, definition of the velocity dispersion, you see that uh, the most obvious is, is that you see an enhanced in major pairs of the metallicity. It's not so, but only with the higher multiplicity, uh, the ones, the, the star formation. So uh, here, what you see is that um, the, the, the dynamics is telling you uh, about uh, the metallicity. So pairs in, uh, in groups and poor cluster are have higher metallicities, which means that they have had um, an enhanced star formation, but that was in the past. And then when we miss here is that we were measuring the metallicity from the gas, um, we, we, we are missing uh, the ones with the higher velocity dispersion. So uh, this is new, and this is all coming from this formalism, the very simple one, when you measure uh, the the, uh, the, the velocity dispersion, and you associate this to a secondary uniform. So these are the conclusions. Compact groups have collapsed at least once in the whole time. A fossil record of star formation provides provide us with a likely dates for interaction of group galaxies in all sin pairs. Low compact groups uh, merges will be mixed or dry preferentially. That's uh, because they have already crossed in the past. Um, the scenario that we have outlined is uh, a way out from a, a short dynamical uh, time paradox in compact groups. And the ideas that we learned in compact groups we have allowed us to interpret the dynamical state of galaxy pairs. Since these are the two publications, uh, Lopez Cruz et al. 2019, uh, AP uh, Astrophysical Journal Letters. And Garduño, Lara Lopez, and Lopez Cruz, this is a master thesis at Inaue, is, is the one with the first. Thank you very much.